And at first I was attracted to that, <clears throat> but as time went on, I thought you can't have deep discussions with that. They want their fun button pushed all the time. This girl seemed different. And for those of you from the other channel, so you know who I'm talking about, her nickname was Maharani. Maharani and I started a writing relationship via email. Then we started Skyping. Then she called me. She right away told her parents about me, Ramon. Told her about my divorce, my past. Right away, mom reacted with, he's how old? He's divorced? They were staunch Catholics. Mother teaches at a Jesuit school in Melbourne. Mother's extremely strict. And their Catholicism tends to look down on anybody that's non-Catholic. That's a fact. What began to unfold in her writing is that this young lady initiated an email telling me a story about her, her art class in high school where the art teacher had the students watch racy films. Specifically, in detail, two guys doing a girl, two girls doing a guy, two guys doing two guys, and a girl on a three-way. Maharani had admitted to me in detail about her having her own dark side. So, what is your dark side? I admit I was aroused by this. Two guys doing it with each other. Two girls, all that. I didn't react strangely to that. I was a little shocked it was coming from her because my picture of her was, well, she here's an innocent virgin girl. That did something to me. I then admitted my desires, and she had heard about my very honest previous YouTube forum. Let me cut to the chase and say that I got hundreds of emails from her that were very sensual in nature, which I'm not going to get into with my viewers and lower myself to a seedy, below-the-gut sucker punch to this woman. This woman had Skype conversations with me where she took off her shirt and posed like this, everything showing. <clears throat> she sent me photos of herself on her own accord. Many. She sent me a video clip of her taking her clothes off and pleasuring herself. <clears throat> and should she be watching, she seems to have forgotten that. As time went on, her parents got increasingly angry at her. They cut her out of the will and gave it to the next in line sister because they said you can't be trusted. Her sister had disrespect for her. She used her family's internet, though her family had come to her and said you're spending too much time on the internet. And her dad came to all of the family members. A sister who's addicted to anime and downloading anime was cutting into data usage. Brother was downloading video games, which was cutting into data usage. And they know Maharani for using Skype and spending too much time with me and data usage. Maharani told graphic details about her sister's odd habits, talked about her dad's ill temper, told me <clears throat> through Skype that dad cussed at me when he took me for driving lesson, called me stupid, idiot, blah, 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 cussed. Naturally, I had feelings for him. I'm like, wow, that's not very nice. I had shared things of an intimate and private nature with Maharani, me being human, She charged up over 220 Australian dollars calling me on the phone. She kept calling me, so of course I talked and I called her as well. Her dad got the phone bill and exploded and I kept telling her. I said, have you looked at the cost? Oh yeah, it's very cheap. I said, no, I don't think so. Dad sent her away out of Melbourne for two weeks to live with a relative and babysit to make the money to pay him the bill. He took her phone and smashed it, threw a chair across the room. She told me that in detail. Her sister, who doesn't have much respect for her, grabbed the chair before it hit Maharani in the face. 
<clears throat> what my viewers did not know, they knew that I had an interest in this girl overseas. As I started writing her saying, you and I need to, your parents are getting mad, your university grades are suffering. No. <clears throat> she begged and pleaded and begged and pleaded for me to stay in her life. I said, I need to date somebody here. <clears throat> I like you, but I'm human. And I, you know, Friday night, I want to go out. Her comment to that. It's okay. I understand if you find somebody there. She kept the dream alive that maybe we could be together. And I did too, until I started looking deeper into it. I said, I can't get a visa in Australia. You don't have any money in the bank to show that you have financial capacity to get to the U.S. So more and more, I wrote emails and had voice conversations with her that said, you know, we this can't keep going on. It's tearing you up. Your parents are seeing you cry and they're telling you, you got to go to counseling. They've told you to go to your priest and your sisters at the Catholic Church. She kept begging and begging me to stay. I said, I'll talk, but you got to get off of this. Find a boyfriend there. I didn't, wasn't wild about it because I had feelings for her, but I said, you, you're going to have to. Maharani <clears throat> wrote a letter June 15th of this year. This year's coming to a close. I miss you. I love you. I can't stand the thought of losing you. I don't know when I'll come back to talk to you because my parents, my mother has ordered me counseling. She saw me crying, blah, blah, blah. Two weeks later, she shows up under a YouTube ID taking cuts and splices of my videos as well as pictures that I had posted on the internet and ran them all together and called me a sensual heretic. A heretic because we had a conversation one day about <clears throat> the teaching, for those of you that are not well-versed in theology, on whether one can lose her salvation. <clears throat> she had told me because of my struggles with you know, impure thoughts. You're not a Christian. And I said, if I'm not a Christian, then who is? <clears throat> I said, is your dad a Christian for throwing a chair and cussing at you? She actually believed her parents were Christians. <clears throat> she also admitted her dad struggled with pornography, but that he had quit doing it, but he had struggled with that. I said, Maharani, all of us sin. But if we can lose our salvation, then it becomes dependent upon works. And the Bible says we cannot be saved by righteous acts. That God reached down, sent his son on the cross to die for us. <clears throat> she was so awful about that that I threatened to end my contact with her there. I said, man, if you can't, if you think that I'm a Christian, then don't talk to me. A day later, oh, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I think you're a Christian, blah, 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 blah. She got on the internet, made a sock puppet account. She hooked up with a guy who had been trolling me, sending me threat letters, threatening to burn me, kill me, threatened <clears throat> minor, a minor relative of mine, threatened other family members and ex-family members of mine, posted my address. And other things happened that I'm not going to state here. Published personal information about me. And when she created her forum, she told people, hold up a piece of paper that says this name, and then I will know you're legit. Because Ramon has hurt many women. I thought, I have? I didn't know that. She lied in her YouTube forum saying that many women had come to her. I went on a video and said, show your face, whoever you are. I thought this was a man. Show me and tell me from a biblical perspective. It says in Matthew 18 or 19, <clears throat> when you have something against your brother, go and show him his fault. She did not do that. She played gossip on the internet. Maharani then consorted with the guy making death threats. I don't know if he made a piece of paper that said the name and played the game, 
But she, like a lamb led to the slaughter, played right into his hands. She revealed to him my first, middle, and last name, my address, everything. Why am I telling viewers this? I'm telling you that women, when they turn on you, can be worse than men. <clears throat> Things got so bad that I had pulled my channel. One, because I got tired of all the infighting. Long loyal fans of mine had gotten tired of the drama. I was paying way too much attention to trolls. Stuff was swirling around the channel. I had 3,256 subscribers. After I pulled my channel, he put a, a flag-waving video saying I won. I saw that and I thought, really? I had also asked him to show his identity, and he refused. And he still didn't. Hid behind big dollar store glasses and a baseball cap. And when I listened to his voice, sitting in Hong Kong, I thought to myself, you've got to be kidding. This, this is the one tough talking, cussing, threatening me. And just on a man level, I thought, this guy's nothing. This guy's nothing. That physically, physically, par for par, this guy is not a threat to me. He had the mentality of a sociopath. He made threats saying if I ever came back, he would do this, this, and this. Maharani had filled him with false information. He threatened to get in touch with people that I live with. Everything. And I thought, you got to be kidding. And I started talking to everybody around. I said, I pulled my channel. Here's what's going on. Just so you know. Maharani had made an accusation that I was using the internet here to talk about the people here. False. But she did use her parents' internet repeatedly, even when they asked her to get off of it. And then went to her university in Melbourne and used the internet to consort with an internet troll which resulted in death threats against a minor son of mine. What she fails to realize is if the dean gets all this information and evidence that I have that she's been doing that, she could be expelled from the university. When her mother and father find out what she's been doing on the internet and spending even more time dogging me, cyberbullying me by proxy through this other guy, they would throw her out of the house. This is a 24-year-old woman that I thought was mature and different than the others of her age. Her reason for doing this was simple. I started dating somebody last spring. It didn't last but a week. I told her about it, just like I told her about other dates I went on. She had left a message on my Facebook that I didn't realize at the time was prophetic. Be careful who you allow on your boat. They could be drilling holes in it. She was saying that about herself. She was angry <clears throat> and got vengeful because I was trying to cut off the relationship. She made her own blog on the internet, a whining and playing victim, calling me a bastard American male. I should have known he was divorced. I should have known, duh. How easy it was for him to let me go. Easy to let you go. Lie upon lie. But this gets better, viewers. Maharani played the biggest game of internet of hide and seek. Number one, she didn't follow true biblical protocol and come to me saying, I'm hurt by you because can we talk about this? There was none of that. Instead, she gossiped, went through the internet, created a channel and a forum, and got other people to talk to her and played right into the hands of people who were dogging me anyway. She criticized me posting pictures on a Tumblr account I had had, but went to those that Tumblr account, looked at the pictures herself, downloaded the pictures herself, and then put them in a video against me, interwoven with my videos. I thought, isn't that a bit hypocritical? 
Then, when the troll made his last flag-waving video saying he trumped, I came away with a couple of things. You trumped, you waited for me to go away, and now you show up, and you don't really show up. We don't have your first, middle, and last name, your place of employment, your address, anything. And I did talk to authorities here, and they told me clearly, if this son of a bitch was in the United States, we could get him. But because he was in Hong Kong, they can't do anything. And he knows that. But as he was making his threats and tough talking in his meek, mild mannered voice in his dollar store glasses, saying he's a financer in Hong Kong and living a dream. I thought to myself, is he really living a dream that he took all this time, tons of Internet time, no wife, no girlfriend, and then tells me about how I should raise my son? And I laughed. This guy doesn't have kids. He doesn't have a life. He goes to the Philippines and several of my viewers found pictures of him with children in the Philippines. And he had made an entire page on me on a site called Encyclopedia Dramatica, which is which is satire in a very offensive, evil form. That he said when he posted pictures on Tumblr, he was acting as if though he was the moral arbitrator of the Internet. He was a video game addict addicted to video games and using the video games to live vicariously through them and naming himself characters from the video games. Even people who disagreed with me saw his video and the only reason he got 1500 plus views was because they were my viewers. And people wrote and said, you can never get these many views. You simply are playing off of those that were loyal to Ramon. How true. But then other people said, I disagree with Ramon, but you are psycho. How dare you say that he can't come back and bully him and tell him he doesn't have freedom of speech. The guy is an atheist. Atheists are always laughing at Christians and people who believe in faith. And he made that clear in his little death threats. Your God won't be able to help you. I got news for you, pal. He has will and does. You're an internet blowhard. That's all you are. What bothers me is that other people who didn't agree with me said, even though we don't agree with Ramon under the old ID, he has a right to freedom of speech. And who are you to try to censor him? The court has adjourned, sir. And the court of public opinion is against you. Even people who disagree with me, you do not have the right to censor anybody. You simply confirm two things to me. My video is attacking the atheists, some of the militant atheists. I said most of the trolls on the Internet are atheists or gamers. You confirmed both of those. You and your other troll friend, who's an overweight blowhard, who doesn't have as many views or subscribers as I did, who felt free to attack me when I linked gaming and the Oregon shooting, the mindset, and he guffawed that and F you, F you all through his video. I watched the behavior of both you guys, and you guys embodied everything I said, that these people are dark, that they play video games and they live vicariously, and deep in their heart, they're violent, dangerous people. That both of these people that were doing this are not tough in and of themselves. They don't do physically demanding, hard, uh, muscular work jobs. They sit on a keyboard and play keyboard warrior all day. And the one troll who's a finance in Hong Kong, I thought to myself, does he answer a phone in a business at a desk or is he really in finance? I lived in Hong Kong for a time, viewers, and the people I knew that were in finance were pulling down big money. They were married, had good-looking women wives, and they were going to Thailand, Bali, and all around Southeast Asia on their time off. None of them would ever get on the Internet to worry about a guy like me. Psychosis, psychotic behavior. But even though I was getting increasingly angry at this guy and wanted to literally tear him from limb to limb should I find him, what emerged 
is when Maharani under this other ID was denying it was her and saying it was a him. And then she released a Vimeo of herself at La Trobe University where she attends. And I thought, mm, wait till the dean sees that clip. Maharani then enjoying that my channel was gone, couldn't keep away, couldn't bury her footprints and fingerprints, but instead kept coming back to enjoy and participate in the drama. And then saying to the troll that she consorted with to begin with, I don't agree with Ramon, but that ED page is awful. And even I don't agree that you did that to him and his family. He responded with, you are that ID and I will reveal you and I will skin you like a rabbit. She had gone back and forth for several times, but when he said that, she suddenly disappeared. Then he said, when Ramon finds out that you are responsible for this, I wonder what he'll think. I'll tell you what I think. Disgusting. And that's why I put this video together about emotionally driven logic. Maharani operated on it. That in her attempt to warn people about how dangerous I was, thinking she had a God-given mandate to do so, she was gossiping. She was putting out private information about me while editing out all of her involvement with me. Hundreds of emails of proof that I can copy and paste that I thought many times of posting a blog and putting every letter that she wrote to me out there for all my viewers to read. As well as posting the pictures. I would not do that because they're nudes of her that she sent me. Maharani needs to know that she has sinned big time. That if she had disagreed with me, no problem. Let's talk about that Tumblr account. I gave her the link to that. She said she liked some of the pictures there. Nudes of women. She was on my Facebook. <clears throat> For her then to deny that she was one of the YouTube monikers out there, when the troll said, oh, it is you, and he put that right in the comment, the descriptive of the video that he made against myself. Watching this unfold was interesting, and it all dawned on me. Ramon, you've been shanghai because you got involved through a written relationship with a woman on the Internet. And she single-handedly brought and wrought this much trouble to you and your son and others. And I was like, wow, did she even think about that? That God is not looking down on heaven saying, Oh, I am with you, Maharani. I am so glad you did this. Freedom of speech transcends everything. In my country, I have a constitutional right. <clears throat> As one who believes in God, I have a God-given right that I'm a free man. But... Shutting down my channel, I learned something. I learned a lot, and here's what I learned. Don't be too personal. Don't engage with your viewers anymore. And don't give attention to the people who are seeking attention negatively. Don't do it. But I do have freedom of speech, and I have something to say. Not because I'm perfect, not because I got it all figured out, because I'm sharing. I watched the comments. Please come back. Please come back. I said, no, I'm not coming back. <clears throat> that ship sank. People were shocked when all of the videos, even the special ones I had in Hong Kong of my memoirs, gone. They're gone. I deleted them all. <clears throat> and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> The reason I went to Hong Kong, excuse me, <clears throat> was because I was in love with a woman. That woman was not in love with me, led me to believe it, 
It took me four years to ascertain that she was a gold digger. She was very immature for her age. I have not made the greatest of relational choices, and I certainly did not make a good relational choice by getting involved with a young woman from Melbourne University who we call Maharani. She was immature. What she did was evil, malicious, vengeful. When her parents find out through me and the dean of her university finds out all that her involvement on here, what she's done and using Internet University, university Internet that resulted in death threats. I do know about Australian Internet cyberbullying and they're very, very tough on it. Maharani's going to find herself in a world of hot water. Am I making a threat? Nope. I don't make threats. I stand up and I face this stuff. Then I will have a plan of action. I already have it. And I will operate on it. Maharani is going to be exposed in all of her glory. <laughs> Posting the nude picture she sent me, I will not do. But I have no problem making a blog showing all of my viewers that the phrase she called me sensual heretic applies more to herself and less of me. I was honest and open about my struggles on my channel. And whenever you are honest in a culture, when, when, when I just dated a girl from the south of the United States, and I'm hurting, and her mother's dominating, and her mother did hurtful things, and I'm there for a visit trying to develop a relationship with somebody, and after all, the, the, the thing comes crashing down, and I call her, Hey, what's up? <sighs> we live in a culture that is fake and plastic and all about their personal happiness. Women complain about all the men that were horrible to them, and when a man comes along who's not horrible to them, and then they hurt them, it's okay. When Maharani from another country who's hiding as a scared little rabbit and being bold to consort with people who had ill intention of me to begin with, internet bullies, cyber warriors, and do what she did and then call that a righteous cause that God's going to reward and honor her for. This is an example of how blind our whole society has become. Did you not look at the Bible and see that it says, seek not revenge? Let God repay. If I had done something, could you tell me what I did? Maharani, if you're listening, I loved you. I did. I was duped by you. But as time went on, aside from my own personal struggles, which I was very transparent about those, and so were you. And I watched women on the internet, one from Yugoslavia who works for the courts, who complained about her brother, her mother, and her father all. Long, beautiful hair, well endowed up here, of what used to be the former Yugoslav. We had conversations. And I want my viewers to know about women and emotionally driven logic. And I want my... She left a nasty comment. A not-so-kind comment on the bully's channel on his last hurrah video and I want to call her out and I'm not going to call her out her ID now but she may be in a blog as well she told me that she was sending nude, nude pictures of herself to women because she did feel aroused by beautiful lesbians and she said that the guys in her town were no good the Christian men were no good. She was currently dating a Muslim. She wrote me when I was into Maharani and said, if I came to the U.S., would you marry me? I said, well, yeah, if I came out and saw we hit it off, I would consider that. I had shared her email with Maharani and they started writing. I told Maharani that she had told me that she had an interest in me. This woman in Yugoslavia then said, you know, it wouldn't bother me if you married Maharani and me. I said, you would be comfortable with me having two wives. We were talking about all this because it was interesting. She goes, well, if we moved to the Middle East, nobody would think it was strange. I said, you'd be comfortable with that? Yeah. 
this woman comes back and says how judgmental I am. She sent me pictures of herself, clothed, but she was telling me that she was sending them to other men, nude, and I did. I said, can I have one of those of you topless? I did. I asked her. I'm human. Oh, no, I don't want to cause you a struggle. Really? But she wrote to me also letters that she forgot she wrote. She then still continued to write me, tell me how good looking I was, how much she liked me, liked my channel. But then she got involved with a Muslim, which I warned her about that. I said, you need to be careful. He's not of your faith. And then the classic woman in her shows up. Well, I can't send you those pictures because, you know, I'm involved with a man. Oh, but you're sending me all your clothes shots. Then Maharani got upset and said, it angers me that she's trying to cut in. Maharani had told me in several emails that she fantasized over the thought of me doing that woman. I said, you do? Why? Because I, I just find it hard to believe that a man like you would be taken with me. Why am I revealing this? Because this is the internet. That's why. Because if you're going to get on here and you're going to shout me down and you're going to say the things you say and present a video that I'm sensual, let me make it clear to my videos that Maharani in Melbourne, Australia is extremely sensual. Extremely. Don't paint a picture, Maharani, of me while conveniently editing out all that you did. You've got hundreds of emails with your name signed to them and your email address signed to them, which I'm sure you got rid of those. And I wrote you a letter this week saying, I have sat back and watched this foolishness enough. I'm going to expose you. And that was my first email to you since the cyber bully put up his video of me. Maharani, shame on you. You are a hypocrite. I will say it. I will say it loud and clear from every possible venue if I have the chance. You knew we couldn't be together. You knew what was happening. You even admitted to me. And your last email to me, you had already had a plan before you wrote that email. You had already had a plan when you put the prophetic statement, be careful who's on your boat. Those on board could be drilling holes in it. That was you. You were planning to come after me. You didn't follow biblical protocol as Matthew 18 lays it out. You did not come and tell me my fault, that you were hurt, that you were angry. You didn't work this out. Instead, you went underground, you lied, you hide, you didn't show your face, you lied by saying you weren't that YouTube channel, and the bully said, oh, you are, and I will show it to you if you don't stop lying. And when he threatened to reveal you, you disappeared like a scared rabbit. Rabbits are your favorite animal. You also messaged me as Little Fox with a rabbit picture. And this is what you said to me just before I pulled my channel. I need to talk to you unless you want me to go away forever. And I responded and you never responded back. You made many sock puppet accounts and you were good at it. You even told me and the cyber bully that you consorted with needs to know this because he would find this rather enlightening. You told me over a year ago that you hated atheists. Now, I don't hate atheists. I don't agree with their reasoning that there's no God, but I don't hate them. What I didn't like, and what I shared with you, is that a lot of these atheists get on the internet and they're abusive and bullying, and I don't care for that. But you said you hated them. You hated their anti-God stance. You said that they would attack you under your old IDs, and you kept making new YouTube accounts. You were a master at sock puppet accounts. <sighs> I had a YouTube ID and I changed it once and then I changed it back. And then I had another ID that was not used for video purposes. It was one I had started way back. 
to like and to favorite videos so I could have a video repertoire to go, a library to go to music I wanted to hear. I had made that in honor of the woman that I was committed to in Hong Kong at the time. That channel has changed names to what it is now. Ramon Sawaya. Maharani, if you're going to play in a big, big ocean, you need to realize there's sharks out here. I was never a shark to you. You told me how people thought you were ugly. You told me how people made fun of you. You told me how people looked down on you, and you were so moved by how I respected and treated you and told you you were pretty and tried to make you feel good about yourself. Your thanks to me for that was to get on the internet and cause damage, death threats, and you can say you had nothing to do with that? That's bull. You got on your emotionally driven logic, showing yourself the immature 24-year-old girl who's failing at her university, whose parents are constantly displeased with you, whose parents have threatened to throw you out of the house, and you try to bring trouble to my residence, which you did, not with them, because I told them everything. By the way, when you live with people, we've all done this. We talk about things that irritate us about other folks we live with. That's normal. But you didn't do that. You said deeply personal things about your family. <clears throat> And I wonder what your dad's going to do when he finds out from me of the things you have talked about. You owe me an apology, young lady. A public one. <clears throat> and if that is not forthcoming, I won't skin you. I'll expose you. And I will get it to your parents. Not real hard to track the Jesuit teaching schools in your place and find out where your mom works. Not that difficult. I'm in the process of it right now. And the dean will get a letter that will say, you need to pass this on to your mother or to your, your one of your employees. Her daughter's doing things on the internet that she needs to know about that are causing international criminal behavior. You're not as smart as you think you are, Maharani. You didn't expose me. You lied. I exposed myself. My thoughts, my struggles, my sins, my, my, my mistakes. Was it all fun? Did you enjoy that? Did it make you become a better person? Did you show the love of God towards your enemy? If I'm now an enemy, you were vengeful, petty. And what was your reason for it? Because we couldn't be together and you made a blog so easy to move on. <laughs> really? It wasn't easy for me. You were in my thoughts every single day. Thank you for confirming to me what is finally emerging in my mind over and over. Women cannot be trusted. Any of them. You'll never know their motives. You'll never know the deep, nasty stuff that lurks in their heart. <clears throat> women are more guilty of capricious malicious revenge than men are <clears throat> men just blow oh come on man but women dive deep like u-boats and do awful damage maharani do not tell us that you're not a heretic I don't agree with your Catholicism. I never did, and I told you that from the start. But what you have done, even your priest wouldn't agree with this stuff. And if I were to go to your priest at your Catholic church in Melbourne and lay all this out, I believe he'd have some words for you, as well as your nuns, as well as your mother and your father. Regardless of what they think about me. <clears throat> what you have done is wrong. 
What you have done in secret will be shouted from the rooftops. I don't have a Tumblr account. I don't have pictures posted. I learned. You haven't. But you lied to me. And you lied saying you weren't that YouTube sock account. You are. And you still have it up there. Your Vimeo that you made showing you holding up the sign as if though you were contacting that other channel that you made. The troll was onto that and saw the timestamp on it and the date. You're not that smart, Maharani. Do you know how many of those have been downloaded all over the place? Even though you pulled it, it's been saved and stored as well as your hundreds of emails and racy conversations with a... When, when your dean finds out you're trying to seduce an older man from university email and internet, as well as consorting with people from your parents' internet that resulted in death threats and trouble and cyberbullying, I wonder what Australia is going to do. Did you think about that? If I was you, I'd buckle down in your school and do well in your university, and I would challenge you to keep your nose clean. If you want to apologize to me, I will forgive you. If you want to contact me and tell me why you did this and have a rational, appropriate discussion, no more nude pictures of yourself, no more sensual conversations by you to me either, you know how to reach me. So it's up to you. I'm only giving you so much time, though. <clears throat> and I'm not going to tell you how long it is. But you better get down on it. Because if you don't, Latrobe's going to be contacted. And so is your mother. <clears throat> and no matter what your mother thinks about me, she ain't going to lie here in this bit of information. Because she cares enough about her family and their reputation. She ain't going to want this stuff going on in her house. I have no words for Mr. Mr. in Hong Kong. I'm done with that. If he wants to feel that he gained a victory, the only victory he did was actually in my favor. The channel needed to go away. It was time for me to reanalyze myself and realize I had made some mistakes. Yes, I did. <clears throat> was I judgmental about some things on my past channel? I was. Am I learning how to hone and, and reinvent myself? Yes. But I also watched fans that claim to be loyal that watched every video suddenly jump in there and start being very, very, now that I was gone, being mean and malicious. I also saw other fans that rose up and said, hey, this is not right. What Maharani did wasn't right. What you, the cyber bully, did wasn't right. I may not agree with everything about Pacific, but I liked his fireside chats. I liked what he had to say, and he was just a guy talking. Not one person <clears throat> has been threatened by me, has had their personal addresses and family information published about them in a malicious way, inciting vengeful stuff. My channel was a thought form. And I'm okay with getting rid of Hong Kong memories because that's all they are. Life goes on. And long after I'm gone, who cares about some video footage of me on the back of a boat in Hong Kong? Even I know that. <clears throat> the pundits got on there and were calling me a narcissist and a megalomaniac, and I just laughed. I thought, really, whenever you have a channel and you put yourself out there and you're vulnerable, you're going to get attacked. That's normal. <clears throat> Took me a long time to grow into the role of a YouTube icon. And I didn't always handle it well. I also learned that I made mistakes by being too personal with a girl on the internet. That I shouldn't have done. 
and that's not going to happen again. <clears throat> if a girl on the internet tells me she's interested in me, I said, tell you what, when you show up in my town at the airport, let me know and I'll pick you up. And then we can start from there. <clears throat> Maharani, you acted no different than a Western feminized woman. Just want you to know that. It's not that I was afraid because you revealed me. You didn't reveal anything. You wrote your comments. He likes bisexual women. Better warn the woman who's thinking about coming out west. She read all that stuff, by the way, and laughed. <clears throat> Maharani also likes and gets turned on by the thought of two guys doing each other. She wrote me that, viewers. Just because, why am I doing this? Because you need to know. Did I ever want to bring harm and threats to Maharani? No, I still don't. But when you're going to do what you did, Maharani, you're going to be exposed. Did you think that I was going to run and hide and you were so glad my channel was gone? Did you think that I was going to just sit there and take that? <clears throat> Why? I liked you. I was honest with you. But you were honest with me and you didn't tell my viewers that at all. That I just think they needed to know. Hundreds of emails of you talking about your lustful, erotic fantasies involving me, involving others. You did that. Did you forget that you wrote all that stuff? <clears throat> I think you did. How sad. Because now it's not hidden anymore. Hate to say this, but I have to. It sucks to be you. Because you lost this time. And it isn't about me winning. I didn't win anything. This wasn't a competition. It's just now it's my turn to stand up on the witness stand. I have a right to a fair trial. I didn't get one with you. So now I'm the prosecutor. <clears throat> and your mother and Latrobe is going to be made aware of this in due time. You let me know if you want to apologize and rectify this. By rectifying, meaning that you pony up and you own up and you stop lying. God, by the way, does not like lying. Read that in the Bible. You want to call me a heretic? You want to say I'm leading people astray? You're misrepresenting me. You're slandering me. And you're lying. When you wrote racy letter upon racy letter and had a racy conversation upon racy conversation on Skype. Did you forget that all that can be copy and pasted and it's all stored? What you do in Skype doesn't go away even if you're blocked. Did you know that? I think you forgot that, didn't you? <sighs> so... Back to the topic at hand. Emotionally driven logic causes all kinds of problems. That when you have a problem with somebody, viewers, you go to them direct. And when you can't go to them and there is no resolution, then you get away from them. Whether it's a girlfriend in the South, whether it's a <clears throat> an online romance. Oh, and one more thing to Maharani. It is not like you and I were physically involved with each other and made love, and I came there and spent six months and ravished you, and we had had a bond. We were online, and we had an interest in each other. I didn't get to hold your hand. I didn't get to hug you. <clears throat> and you're acting like somebody... Where we've been married for 10 years and I cheated on you. Did you think that I could live with an online relationship after all I've been through? You weren't doing well with it. You were crying. Your mother caught you crying. She told, sent you to counselor after counselor and told you you need to stop doing this. You went to Latrobe when they shut down your your availability on the internet at the house. And then you wrote me there. Every evening I come home and you were there. 
and most of those racy letters came right from La Trobe University's internet. I just want you to know that when a dox is published against me and this stuff happens, that that wasn't cool and you are responsible and I lay that all at your feet. You gave out my first and last name. You gave out the names of people. You gave out the names of exes, sons, and everything. Shame on you. Do you really think that God is going to bless you for that? What did my son have to do with you? Nothing. I'm going to make a statement. I don't hate women. I have tried over and over and over and over to give women the benefit of the doubt. And women have hurt me over and over and over. I did not go out and become flaming homosexual and said, well, I don't want a woman. All women are no good. I keep trying to believe and keep trying to believe. But now, finally, I'm starting to realize women are dangerous. Women cannot be trusted. And every one of them lie. Without exception. I have been honest. I have been vulnerable. And they claim they love that. And then they hurt you. Am I going to join MGTOW? No. Do I want to get revenge on Maharani? No. I wish Maharani would have the guts to talk to me. Not to revive anything. But to put closure to this, to deal with it properly, and move on. Now, who's got the heart here? Maharani was vindictive, malicious, deceitful. Those aren't Christian terminologies. I know that my life is not always an example of the way a godly person should be. But after me laying out all the evidence right here, neither is yours. I'm tired of the stuff that my focus was on a cyberbully a gamer addict, and he was motivated by a woman that he ended up using and ended up hating just to accomplish his megalomaniacal goal. But all of this, all of this was precipitated by a woman. I jokingly refer to Jezebel's. Maharani had admitted a lot of other very deeply personal things that if I were to put that out here, my viewers would be shocked coming from a seemingly mature, innocent virgin girl. Stuff that was of her own heart and honest admissions about things that she liked. That I and my naivety didn't think that that could come. The good news about all of my involvement with the Internet and women and men and people and talking is that if there's anything, it's really showed us how human we are. That you never know what rests in that seemingly innocent face of that simple girl. <clears throat> you have no idea what is in the deep, dark, inner chambers and recesses of their hearts. But I got more of a picture of Maharani now than I did in the beginning. And it's horrifying. Is that the kind of a woman that any man would want to marry? A woman who plays like that? <laughs> I don't think so. Ramon didn't get a right to a fair trial on the internet forum. 
a guilty verdict was rendered. People were doing what they were doing and even doing unethical and illegal and immoral and unscriptural ways to get back at me while none of them stood up and said, hey, I disagree with you because and here's why. <clears throat> even even the trolls, I, I watched a pattern of never did they write what they disagree with me on and why. It was just vicious attacks about looks, cussing, threats. And I had to learn that that's a sign that somebody's already lost. What you're saying is getting to them, they're getting annoyed by it, and the only way they can deal with it is responding in childish, immature, threatening, cyberbullying fashion. I want to apologize to my viewers that you had to get sucked into this vortex. <clears throat> I had no idea that the one that I considered so dear to me, the one I called my little doe, was the one on my boat, not drilling a hole in it, but that it planted a bomb in the engine room that ruptured the hull and caused water to come pouring in like crazy. I had no idea it was all done by a girl. <clears throat> and that is why this video is made. Those of you that are my fans from before and viewers from before needed to know what happened. And I just told you. I had nothing to hide. I'm not here to be scandalous. <clears throat> not here to be sleazy against Maharani. You just didn't get the whole story, and it wasn't fair. Now you did. So I'll let you guys make up your own minds. <clears throat> That's all. You decide. I feel better getting it off my chest. I'm perfectly confident in what I say, because... <clears throat> Maharani... Thank you for showing me the 20-something-year-olds. And me at my age, not a good mix. <clears throat> if you'd approach me with confidence and talked out your frustrations, I would have entertained that. And you know that to be true. For you to do what you did, it's disgusting. Your life's not so private anymore, is it? And it's not going to be. Because what's done in secret will be shouted from the rooftops. <clears throat> the people that you said stuff about in this house, the lies you made up, they saw you on Skype. They said hello to you on Skype. Did you forget that? Did you forget that my honesty here is the same honesty that's exhibited in here? Did you forget that? Did you get on YouTube and tell everybody that you were using your parents' internet to complain about your parents and your sister? And I'm not going to reveal things about <clears throat> your siblings that are very personal, things you never should have told me. But what I am going to mention is that you don't earn one dime of income on your own and you are living off your parents. They buy you food, clothing, pay your roof over your head and your phone, and you're not even doing what they say. And I struggled with that at first because you're an adult. And I thought you have the right to have an interest in whoever you want. And I was dumb to take up that championing call and involve myself with you that it only resulted in all of this. I was stupid <clears throat> because I allowed my heart to be pulled by you. But then as time went on, I started to see more clearly and go, hey, you know, this is causing you problems. And I started to try to pull away and you wouldn't let me. Seven, eight months <clears throat> before you did what you did, I was trying to pull away. So the sensual heretic, as you accuse me of, you kept going after me, going after me, going after me. Even with the admissions of all my struggles in life, you said, but there's nobody like you. <clears throat> you respect me. You treat me with dignity. Yes, I did. And you treated me with dignity by doing what you did, by consorting with enemies 
atheist enemies that you hate, that you consorted with <clears throat> people whose intentions are not going to further your agenda with God, that they didn't care about you, you, in childish fashion, used them to execute revenge on me for whatever grievance you had. And you call that Christ-like? And you call me a heretic because I disagreed with you? What is that? Maharani, do you understand in your mind that you are a hypocrite? Do you understand and get that? That you could lie and pretend you weren't? Did you forget that? <clears throat> I have witnessed something that we can get so involved in the internet that we throw our Christianity right out the window and seem to think that we're living for God. I watched that in myself. I've watched that in you. I've watched it in others. So you can get so caught up in it that you just are you're doing everything that the devil loves and you don't see it. Emotionally driven logic will get you in trouble, and it will cause trouble. <clears throat> Never once did you write any ex treatise on why you disagreed with my view on eternal security of the believer. Instead, you just mounted an attack, sleaze campaign, slanderous, lying, editing out all of your involvement with me, which was very convenient, which is what all women do. All women do. All women tell the story about all their ex-boyfriends and everybody else. And now I'm learning. Let's talk with the ex-boyfriends, shall we? <clears throat> Why did this guy go and leave you for another girl? Was there something more? Because you did some of the things to him that you did to me. And he said, man, I'm not going to get hurt. I'm pulling out. We don't know, do we? It's all about trust. It's all we choose who we choose to put our trust in. And I have put my trust in people only to find that they were drilling holes in my own boat. <clears throat> Thank you, Maharani, for helping me to become smarter and clean up my act. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you to a lovely young lady in the South that taught me to be more discerning. Thank you for showing me that women can't be trusted. <clears throat> Thank you for showing me that my focus has to change. Do the things I'm good at. My work. Helping people. <clears throat> Last night a friend contacted me. Who's struggling? She didn't go to anybody else but contacted me. I haven't heard from her in a long, long time. And she came to me because she knows I'm safe. I have to realize where my strengths are. And I have to realize what I'm not good at. I don't seem to be doing well with a relationship romantically with a woman <clears throat> and that's not all my fault some of it might be I mean I'm human I make mistakes I say things do things that aren't always the perfect polished way <clears throat> should I hang up the phone no but sometimes I just don't know what else to do but I'm tired of women pulling on my heart Getting me to fall head over heels for them. Complaining to me about the way guys treated them. Complaining that they called you ugly. Didn't think you were pretty. Criticized your looks. And getting me to do what every one of us men have fallen for over and over again. Oh, that's not true. You're pretty. You're pretty. You're pretty. And you're sitting there basking in all that. Oh, I'm getting all this attention I want. And then they go and stick the knife in your gut. Is it wrong for me to talk about that stuff on the internet? I don't think so. Because I'm not going to mention IDs and names anymore. I mentioned Maharani to my viewers that have come over here. Because they needed to know what happened. I'm done with that subject. <clears throat> We're going to talk more about women. We're going to talk more about cultural things. 
And we're going to talk more about trying to teach ourselves how we can deal with all this. I will still date. I'm not going to say no to dates. In fact, I got one Friday. But I have no more hope in a long-term permanent relationship with any woman. Women have conditioned me to finally believe that. It's always been said that guys are wham-bam. Thank you, ma'am. That's not the case with me. I want to build a home and a life with one. And I find that women are just home wreckers, not home builders. I have the right to freedom of speech. I have the right to talk about what's dear to my heart. I have a right to talk about my personal experiences. Getting involved in sleazy tactics and mentioning names of people and their addresses and doing that is not right under any circumstance. Bringing death threats and persecution to somebody because you disagree with them. <laughs> if I were to tell the atheists, if I was a governing lord, and I was to tell atheists, you are no more allowed to have the right to say there is no God, there would be an outcry and I would be shut down. But for atheists to get on the internet and try to censor me, because they hate me, you don't have that right either. Not at all. You have a simple solution. Don't listen to me. Don't look at me. Don't follow me. But leave me alone. Because I'm not going to go away. I'll go away when God says I go away. Not you. That, that's simple. That the harder you come after me, the more I realize that, man, I must be getting through. The best way for somebody to shut somebody up is if views are around zero or ten, you realize you're not reaching anybody. But even with all the controversy surrounding my other channel, I found it very interesting that people that hated me the most were watching every single video. <laughs> I just can't understand that. There's emotionally driven logic, huh? For somebody who's in finance in Hong Kong, they sure had a fixation with a YouTube icon, and I just can't make sense of that. I know people in finance. I know people that I walk their dogs for. If I were to sit down and tell them this, they would laugh. <laughs> Guys in finance that he's... Trolling on the internet? Are you kidding me? Shoot, I go to Bali. I take my wife on a Southeast Asian cruise ship. I go to Bangkok. I go to Chiang Mai. I go to Vietnam and Ho Chi Minh. I mean, come on, man. Even I know I'm not worth all that attention. I'm nothing. <laughs> I'm just one guy speaking his mind on the internet. I'm not a megalomaniac. I'm not. There's times I want to crawl away in a cave and just pull the plug on everything and go off for a year away from all people and just to see what it's like to hear the wind in the pine trees and watch the eagle soar and have nothing to distract me and try to get closer to God. That is in me. But yet, I have to be out here in the traffic lanes. I like engaging with humanity. That's what I've been all my life. Transportations and communications. That's my thing. God's not going to let me go be a wallflower somewhere. It just can't happen. That's not who I am. But, cyber trolls, thank you. Thank you for causing me to reevaluate myself and, and analyze it. Yeah, I've made some mistakes. I did. What were my mistakes? Giving too much attention to my enemies. That was one. Mentioning IDs. Going on and on about certain people and going on and on and on. Video after video. It was communicated to me that sometimes I was pretty harsh. And I had a hard time accepting that, but I realized that, yeah, I'm harsh. 
that when I talk about something I dis- disagree with, I got to learn to somehow be a little more gracious about it. Not agreeing, but the name calling. Yeah, I need to polish it up a little bit. But I also needed to analyze myself. You know, call myself a Christian and I'm posting pictures of topless women. Yeah, shouldn't have done that. Who of us hasn't sinned? So viewers, <clears throat> this video needed to be done. And I want to say something for the young lady in the South, if you're listening. I loved you. You have things about you that are different. I'm sorry for anything that I have done that disappointed you, but I was hurt by you. I really was hoping for a future with you. Not rushing to the altar. No way, no way, no way is... Ramon going to do that again. I'm not trying to crap talk your mother. I'm trying to talk about people and their dysfunction. I'm using my life as a living illustration of what I go through to put it out there. I'm not some Dr. Phil that talks about psychological things from a detached basis. I'm a living classroom. And I'm simply sharing with the viewers, this is what I went through, this is what I learned, this is what I observed. So if people think I'm too harsh for doing that, if you want a channel that's real, this is going to be real. That's what drew you here in the first place. And I had to analyze for a couple months. Should I stay or should I go? Oh, the old channel needed to go. All the videos, all the comments. It was. It was like an ocean liner that took everything with it. There was a few videos floating in the waters. And people who had sentimental feelings scavenger hunters, souvenir hunters that wanted to be associated with that great ship grab the stuff in the water and people who were my fans and are my fans posted some of those. Thank you. I didn't expect it or see it. I was shocked. I saw videos and I saw the people stand up and defend me. I don't want you to think I didn't notice that. I was, I was moved, touched. But the court has spoken. No one has a right to tell me that I can't come back. Yes, I can. Especially if I renew things and I, I, can, I can come back. And I have. I have rights as a citizen of this country. And I have things that need to be said. Every one of you has a story. Every one of you has something to offer. Bullying and intimidation is not a gift. It is not a strength. It is not an asset. It is destructive. My video channel was simply me being me. And if that bothers any of you all, go find something else to do. Get over it. It's my opinion, it's my beliefs, it's my convictions, it's my experiences. If you don't like it, don't listen to it. Leave me alone. Simple. I hope for all the women listening out there that you will hear anything of what is in my heart here. And instead of writing me off as some anti-female blah, blah, blah. 
hear from a male's perspective that we hurt and bleed too. That we've tried to care. And we have been put through all kinds of drama and hurt because we love somebody who led us to believe they wanted that and in the end left us going, what did they want? What was all this about? Life seems empty when that happens. Women, stop playing games with men's hearts. Stop it. Stop it. That's Ramon's commentary on the whole matter. Stay tuned. There's more videos coming.